From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Diane Parker. Miller has our back to school forecast, plus an urban camping site in Bozeman becomes a crime scene. But first, our top story. Today marks the first day of school for Billings Public School students, but a warning to parents went out last night about suspicious activity near Broadwater Elementary earlier in the month. The letter did not go into detail about the incident with Superintendent Garcia writing, quote, we don't want to create unnecessary alarm Today, there are extra school resource officers both in and around the building. We have been unable to confirm what the concern is about. Now, if students, parents, teachers, or community members see or hear something of concern, like active shooter situations, bullying, or suicide threats, nearly 20 schools in Montana now have an anonymous tip line to report it. And it's as easy as texting or calling. Thank you for calling the Safe from Montana Student Safety Hotline. An intake specialist will be with you shortly. That's the voice of Safer Montana's school safety tip line. It's an anonymous reporting system designed to triage safety threats as they come in from students, parents, teachers, and community members. Thank you for calling the Safer Montana tip line. How may I help you? Our goal with this program is really opening another channel for community members to be partners to ensure that our kids are safe. Billings parent Emily Ross first introduced school district two to the concept a mom passionate about student safety with most mass shooters after the fact law enforcement goes in and they find that everybody had a piece of the puzzle this neighbor heard something that student at school saw something but other districts are also adopting the tip line safer montana is providing it free of charge to any school district in montana through 2025 via a grant so far 15 schools have signed up with the state's largest school district billings expected to fully roll it out this fall most states have a statewide adopted tip line we don't our intention was to fund a tip line get it in as many districts as we can in a couple years use data to show its effectiveness and advocate for a statewide adoption. Safer Montana says the tip line is already saving lives with four urgent tips related to suicide last year alone. That's out of 49 total tips. 42 were standard and related to bullying and vaping and two were test tips like not enough mustard at lunch. Students probably will test this to see if it works and if you do anything and then it will be used appropriately. Suicide prevention is on the mind of Montana administrators and parents alike after an alarming report came out in 2021 showing 10% of students attempted suicide. Many of those were bullied via text, social media, or in person. Montana is the third highest suicide rate in the whole country. We are, are experiencing student suicides at least monthly. Any lives that we can save, anything we can do to support our children and to support them in mental crisis or situations of depression or clinical issues, we definitely uh, are full force invested in preventing any situation that can lead to the loss of life. More trouble at one of the urban camping sites in Bozeman, this time on Bozeman's north side. MTN's Edgar Sidio has an update on an attempted deliberate homicide. A 34-year-old Bozeman man is accused of hitting another man here near the intersection of Royal Wolf Way and Prince Lane on Friday evening. According to court documents, when police arrived on the scene, they say they found a man with a head injury and pools of blood. Officers say that they did find a metal pipe at the scene that was taken in as evidence. Court documents also stated that the incident started over a fight after a falling out with Kuntz's mom and the victim who she was dating. In court on Monday, prosecutors said that Kuntz did act in self-defense. Only left um, because after this incident, he was attacked by a friend of the alleged victim. Um, the client uh, would like the court to know that he did not say, I'll kill you, as was um, expressed in the affidavit of probable cause. Um, he is the one that was threatened 
Now you might remember this is the second incident that has happened at a homeless encampment around town. About a month ago, we told you about a stabbing that took place near the homeless encampments near Bozeman Beach. According to court documents, Koontz and his mom did flee the scene here in Bozeman. They found his truck over at the town pump in Whitehall. Today, Koontz appeared in court where his bail was set at $100,000 and his next court appearance is set for September 8th. In Bozeman, Edgar Cidio, MTN News. Arrests are up and crime is down in Billings. That according to the police department's mid-year report, which the chief is calling a step in the right direction. The data shows violent crime down 11% from 1790 crimes committed at this point in 2022 to 1593 crimes through this June. But there are still worrisome numbers in the report. 1032 people with warrants were taken into custody only to be released back to the public often due to a lack of space at the jail. These people reoffend. They go out and commit more crimes. And the worst thing that can happen is a uh, domestic abuse suspect or an assault suspect that goes back and kills somebody. And St. John credits some of the progress to a heightened focus on gang activity. Mile City residents are under a boil water order and it could be weeks before they're given the all clear to use water again. An alarm at the water treatment plant sounded Sunday morning because the system was not putting in enough chlorine to purify the tap water. The city tested the water all day yesterday and will continue to do so until it's safe to drink. But that process could take weeks. The boil order impacts 10,000 customers. Obviously, we don't want them drinking the water or consuming it in any fashion unless it's been oiled and then cooled off. You know, as far as showering, washing clothes, things like that, that's fine. Water in your lawn, you know, washing dishes, you should probably use boiled water. This situation could present a different set of challenges if it continues into next week as Miles City School begins on the 28th. And that's a look at some of the day's top stories. Hopefully Tuesday treating you good so far. Um, we'll have a look at our local forecast coming up here in just a bit. But first off, what's going on across the U.S.? Well, the Midwest to the Gulf Coast. Check this out. Extremely dangerous heat persisting this week. You can see some of those triple digits down there. Uh, look at uh, down in Phoenix, 104. We'll go 105 in Dallas, 101 today in Omaha. South Texas, uh, heavy rain, gusty winds associated with tropical storm Harold going to slam into the coast there. You can see there's a marginal risk for severe weather in that green shaded area on the southern tip of Texas and the Great Basin in the southwest. We're looking at scattered flash flooding concerns possible for some of us here in central Montana to our east could be the hottest day of the week. High pressure trying to keep us dry could see some heavy rainfall in the northwest corner of the state. A lot of stuff to break down. We'll do that coming up. On Friday, Montana Attorney General Austin Knudsen's office filed their response to a federal suit seeking to block a state ban on TikTok. They argued the state does have the authority to regulate the app to protect Montanans. It comes after those seeking to overturn the ban made their case that it's an overbroad burden on free expression rights. Senate Bill 419, sponsored by Republican Senator Shelley Vance of Belgrade and signed into law by Governor Greg Gianforte, says TikTok can't operate in Montana and app stores can't offer it for download within the state's borders. Individual users wouldn't face penalties. Supporters cited claims that TikTok's ownership in China could leave user data vulnerable to the Chinese government. TikTok filed suit in federal court, saying the ban was an overreach. That case has since been combined with another lawsuit filed by Montana-based content creators. The plaintiffs are seeking a preliminary injunction to stop the state from enforcing the law after its effective date, January 1st. They say the ban is cutting Montanans off from the audience they can reach through TikTok, infringing on First Amendment rights. They argued the law singles out the app without justification, and that the state is restricting interstate commerce and intruding into areas of foreign policy. Knudsen's office said the ban is blocking a product, not the speech it conveys, and users have many other options for expressing themselves. They argued Montana is in line with other states and federal leaders who've expressed concerns about data privacy on TikTok and said the app can't claim First Amendment protections to avoid a law that's not targeted at expressive activity. A hearing on the request for an injunction is scheduled for October 12th at the federal courthouse in Missoula. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News.